The February 2015 issue of Swimming World Magazine brings Chuck Warner's series on the 10 greatest triumphs and tragedies in swimming to a close with an in-depth look at history's top swimming tragedy, the death of Fran Crippen. Teaming with Todd Kemmerling, Warner looks back on the tragic day in October 2010 when we lost Crippen during a warm water, open water race in the United Arab Emirates. The issue continues from there, posing the question of whether or not open water swimming has become safer since Crippen's death and whether FINA has acted in the best interests of athletes in setting water temperature regulations. More troubled waters exist in college swimming where the sport is in danger of extinction in the coming years if costs in college sports continue to exceed revenues. With football and basketball players demanding more financial compensation from their schools, more schools are going to make cutbacks nationwide and non-revenue generating sports such as swimming are going to be the first to go. In his column that begins on page 18, George Block fears that even the best college swimming teams in the nation are not immune to this rising danger. Ryan Lochte had what he called one of the worst years of his swimming career in 2014, not winning any individual gold medals in international competition. But as you'll see in Jeff Cummings' article on page 13, Lochte is all in for 2015 and beyond and ready to get back to the top of the podium at this year's World Championships and next year's Olympic Games. Every swim team in the world takes time in each practice to work on drills, which involves breaking a stroke down into single element and working on proper technique. But in this month's issue, Rod Haverluck writes the most of the time, drills are a waste of time. In the long run, they are either reinforcing bad technique or put overdue stress on shoulders and other joints. Haverluck lists some drills that can help swimmers improve technique if done correctly. Overcoming adversity is one of the common themes of champions, and Annie Grievers looks back on several major moments in recent swimming history when a team had to rise above tragedy, such as the death of a beloved coach or a sudden illness the day before a major meet. This month, Mike Stott's Lessons with the Legends article looks back on the stellar career of Joe Burnell, who has been at the helm of Burnell Gator for 45 years. It has produced a few nationally and internationally accomplished athletes, including Bobby Hackett and David Burkoff. Each year and each new generation of swimmers brings new challenges for Burnell and his New England team, but he feels that he has some tools to continue the team's very rich tradition for so many years to come. Stott has a Q&A with Western Kentucky coach Bruce Marcionda, who talks about his evolution from high school coach to head coach at Clemson and later Western Kentucky. In this month's Voice for the Sport, Casey Barrett takes aim at FINA, the global governing body for aquatic sports, and the lack of direction and stewardship it has taken in the past year. From scheduling an open water race in the same country where Fran Crippen died, to giving Russian President Vladimir Putin the organization's highest honor during a Russian doping scandal, Barrett wonders if FINA should exist at all. The time to register your young swimmer for a summer swim camp is now and you can find a full list of the best swim camps in the United States in our annual camp directory starting on page 32. Now is also the time to subscribe to Swimming World Magazine and with a subscription you not only get our monthly print magazine but access to the magazine online with additional features as well as our bi-weekly digital issue that looks back on some of the recent top news. To view our subscription offers, go to SwimmingWorld.com and click on Magazine at the top of the page.